How many times are we going to finish him? Scorpion looks like that cat creature from Star Wars Attack of the Clones. And Goro looks silly still. This is my review for the 1995 live action film Mortal Kombat. A. D. N. It's headphones nail! What's up guys, Headphones Neil here, back with another film review, and this is more of a follow-up to the review that I just did for the Mortal Kombat 2021 film trailer. So I ended up re-watching the 1995 version of the film so I could get a better idea of what they did then and um, semi-forget in a couple of months when this year's version of the film comes out, but also have a good comparison for what they did at the time, what they missed, didn't miss what I thought they did right, and compare it to what they do in this year's film. So overall, watching the film this time around, one of the things that, or one of the few things that stood out was the set design. So granted, they went in on a leaky boat, which I don't really remember from the video game series to begin with. But when we get to Shang Tsung's island, we see them climbing the steps, which kind of reminded me of the ladder that we have to go through as a hierarchy of defeating all the various warriors to ultimately beat the game. But that generally worked, and then the progression of difficulty in the various um, characters kind of worked for me. Um, introducing Scorpion and Sub-Zero generally worked. Um, the actors that played um, Sonya Blade, Johnny Cage, and Liu Kang generally worked as far as the acting outside of when they were in their fighting or outside of when they were fighting were okay. It could have been a little bit better, but progressively for me, they got better over time just because early on you want to set up the characters um, just so you have some way to, pro to progress into their fighting moves. I want to say that the Mortal Kombat version did it a little bit better just because we established their abilities earlier in the film and we kind of got to see how they were as far as personalities overall very well. Comparing Mortal Kombat to Street Fighter, Street Fighter ended up doing a lot of the character stances very much towards the very end of the film so it's not really and for because i don't remember exactly i'll say approximately the last half an hour of street fighter was um us seeing all the characters in the how we wanted to see them from the video games minus all the special effects so you see um E Honda in his look zangief and bison who i think generally was in his overall character for most of the film but with him flying around and all that was until the end we get to see guile's um spinning spinning kick um at the end of the film we see i think ryu or ken doing their um hadouken but without the blue thunderbolt granted they did not establish that but seeing them do the move without it is kind of, looked kind of ridiculous so with mortal kombat we established their abilities earlier on in the film and they progressively get further and further into their um, special moves. So for example, I want to say probably about 50 or 60% of the way in once we get into um, Johnny Cage's fight with Scorpion, we get to see um, his um, speed move, which I actually had totally forgotten that they did in the film. So I think that was one of the hangups that I had forgotten that they did that. So it felt weird to not see him do his moves, but to have Sonya Blade do her um, flip kick or flip thing with her legs upside down, like a handstand kick, I guess, or a handstand thing around Kano's neck was a good thing as part of that fight. So overall, watching it this time, we get all of that. Uh, we do get Liu Kang doing his little fireball move at the end of the film, which was good, but it would have been nicer to have it as an actual fireball going out. It was good to see him do his bicycle kick in his fight against Scorpion, which was the only really ridiculous thing in the film for me that didn't really work was that Scorpion, as a CGI character, looked way too CGI. He looked a lot more brighter and colorful than the rest of the film. For me, if they had kind of used the same a similar color palette as Goro, 
Um, or maybe even Kano, it would have worked out a little bit better. But when we see Scorpion early on with the, with the visual between um, Katana and Shang Tsung, it looked bad. And then later when he goes into the statue rock figurine right before the fight with Liu Kang, that also didn't look as good until after the fight. So it's one of those things where, granted, the computer or the CGI wasn't as good as it is now, but... Um, if they had made it a, him, his color palette a little bit darker, it would have worked a lot better. I think they went a little overboard with the green to make sure, make us the audience say, oh, look, that obviously is Scorpion, even though they did bring it up a couple of times. So it would have been nice to, basically that's the one real ridiculous thing, but watching it this time and after recently rewatching um, Star Wars Episode Two: Attack of the Clones, um, Scorpion looked like basically a baby version of that cat character from the Geo Notion arena, um, where Obi Wan was being held trial um, with the Geo Notion. So that's a little bit of a side jag there. Um, Goro, as far as his um, rubber suit look and all of that. Um, I want to say he was like 80% okay just because when we first see him in the shadows that was good and then when we see him talking to Kano in the dining room that worked just because it was a darker atmosphere but when we come see him out in the light I mean he looks as far as a color palette and generally blending in with the rest of the characters he generally fit but once he started moving and um, they animated him it looked okay i mean i want to say i want to actually give the film props for what they did just because in general as far as a suit goes his he actually looked a lot better than i would have expected them to be able to have done so overall i liked him but it just looked i mean the character is a bit silly for the video game to live action animation or adaptation so it's kind of hard to say anything bad on my end it does look bad when they're animating him out in the light but as far as comparing him in the scene with Kano versus in the fight with um, Johnny Cage I like the Kano version better so I kind of wanted the, their fight to maybe have been in that cave or um, maybe make their fight on the cliff a little bit closer to sunset when it's a little bit darker so the balancing stays about the same and still have the fight scene so in general that would have or better rather than have all the lighting around him so all the details stand out that much more that he's a rubber suit and he looks that much more ridiculous so for me it wasn't bad it's just that the lighting on him was made it look worse and uh when there was less lighting so um i'm not gonna really fault anyone too much for that so that's more that's just something that stood out to me this time around um as far as Shang Tsung I liked his over overall the character was good I'd probably give him about a B grade as far as how they translated him from the video game to the movie just because of the whole your soul is mine finish him um flawless victory and all of that although the thing I'm also going to take points away because the number of times he said finish him in the film kind of took away from the meaning of um finish him because if granted if you don't play the video games it doesn't really mean anything to you but when you keep saying it over and over for every single fight it doesn't really mean much unless you're in a battle that really matters so in a, like for example the fight with Goro and the first dude that um he kills off that would have been fine with the finish him um maybe in one of the um maybe in the scorpion versus johnny cage fight or even like as a when shang sun gets mad at um katana for not properly fighting against Liu kang um he he could have even angrily said to finish him something along those lines were the, basically limit the number of times he says that and instead of saying it over and over, like I think he said it a, good, a few, I want to say a good half dozen to maybe ten times. And a bunch of those times were just forcing Goro to finish the fight and saying, finish him, finish him. It's like, okay, that, that kind of takes you out of the film as a Mortal Kombat video game player that um, it's not, there's, he's saying it a little bit too much. And then um, 
it takes away from the seriousness of the Shang Sun character that he would fall prey to his no emotions um, that easily. And then same thing with the flawless victory. There were a few couple of fights where the victories were not flawless. So I don't know. It felt like they're, they were a little bit too liberal in that they were just trying to play a lot of play up to the fan service of saying that a bunch of times. But I think in general, there were only two times where it was actually a flawless victory. And I think it, I want to say it was with um, the Sub Zero. For the Sub Zero fight with the, one of the fighters right after the dinner scene when they get to the island, and I want to say um, Sub Zero, or sorry, um, Goro's um, fight with one of the Earth Realm fighters, and that was probably Minnie's, and that's even a limited thing there because he the fighter did get a couple of hits on Goro, um, and then even with the um, fight at the end when um, Shang Tsung and Liu Kang are fighting I think Liu Kang ends the fight with uh, flawless victory which to me I, it was less a flawless victory and more of a fatality because we have the scene of uh, Liu Kang kicking Shang Tsung into the pit with a spike so it was more of a fatality um, I want to say their energies were drained quite a bit after that fight because they got a bunch of hits off of each other so the flawless victory in the film in general for me had very little meaning because they use it in every after every few fights, especially when they were fighting and all, both both um, fighters got hits off of each other. So it was one of those things where it was less a flawless victory and more of okay, you won, so um, congratulations, you move on to the next round. So overall, if I was to give the film a grade, I would probably give it a grade of about a B. Uh, mostly because the set designs were really good. They had it on the island. We have the fighters with the audience, for example, with Sub-Zero and one of the fighters. Um, a lot of the special moves and their special effects were pretty good. Um, the one, notably, um, Johnny Cage's um, speed attack, um, Sub-Zero's ice move, um, Scorpion's get over here, and the um, reptile thing in his that comes out of his hand. Um, Liu Kang's bicycle kick was good for the time. They did a, a lot of, they showed a bit of it and then they cut to a close up of him doing it. So that kind of worked for me. The fireball was okay. It could have been better, but at least they had it. It wasn't any, it's not anything to phone home about, but, um, it looks like in the 2021 film, they're going to do that a lot better. So, um, overall, that's good. Goro. Um, I could have sworn that his finishing move was to rip a person in half, so for the time, doing that much gore of ripping someone in half was definitely not going to fly, so I understand why they did it, but him just hitting someone really hard off the top on the top of the head to knock them out and finish the match was kind of silly. I would have preferred that he um, did a Bane on Batman move by breaking his back or throwing him really hard against the ground. Um to finish the fight so that was kind of silly but i'm glad they did something to show goro's strength um the, and then i also like the number of times that they showed the um one of the players being dizzy and um not able to move so the fighter who would ultimately win would um, hit them so many times that they got dizzy and had been, been unable to move so that was a good translation that from the video game that i didn't remember seeing the first time around so I definitely want to give the film points for all the nuances, nuances that they did. Um, Kano not really using any of his special moves kind of stood out, but the actor's performance I thought was pretty good overall as far as his drunkenness, being an underworld boss, um, his taunting of Sonya Blade, and his conversations with Goro, so that I actually I did like. I didn't like Johnny Cage's acting stuff. It was okay. But after a while, it got a bit silly, and then with his flirting with Sonya, got a bit over the top. Um, they sl slowly progressed out of it, but I kind of wish that they had progressed out of that a little bit sooner. Um, kind of around the time of the boat, uh, where he, after Scorpion reveals himself with all the electricity, or sorry, Raiden with his electricity, um, and Scorpion and the ice and all that. I kind of wanted that, or would have thought that that would have been the turning point, not later on the island, that he would continue to do it. Um, I mean, the whole stuff with his taunting on Goro worked, but the rest of it with the flirting with Sonya Blade 
kind of took me out of it as well. So one of those things where his character could have been a little bit better. Uh, Liu Kang was generally good. I liked um, his performance throughout and his growth through the film that worked for me. Raiden was good enough, but the joking kind of took me out of it. I kind of imagined Raiden to be a little bit more serious, but the film overall had a little was a little bit more on the side of balancing the lightheartedness and the seriousness of it. So it worked well enough, but could have been a, it could have done without the seriousness just because of how um, brutal and violent the f video games were to begin with. So there was that. Um, so things like that. I mean, overall, the movie does a did a pretty good job of adapting the video game to the movies. Especially since they adapted it without a lot of the um, violence and gore and the, all the things we saw in the video game. But they translated enough of the various other elements to make up for it. So in general, for me, that's why the film works for its time. But it, I mean, for now, watching it um, 26 years later, you can see where the various elements stand out. And other things like Katana was okay, but her fighting looked ultimately very slow. So I'm not... And I mean fighting with her... Um, I forget what those knives are called. The ones that look similar to what um, the Ninja Turtle Raphael uses. But her fighting was generally slow and methodical. So it kind of looked like she was performing moves rather than um, a martial artist. So... That could have been a little bit better, so we'll see if they improve on that um, in the 2021 film. But the overall, most of the film stands out as being generally good as far as an adaptation goes, and trying to keep to the original storyline um, or the story of and lore of the video game. So that's kind of why it works for me. Granted, there's things that don't work, but not enough to make it a general failure in my opinion so like i said i give it a grade of about a b so we'll see with the 2021 film um if the gore and violence generally makes the film better or makes it just stick to the lore a little bit better so it all depends on how they bring um the characters together for the Mortal Kombat tournament. Um, it sounds like based on the summary of the film that they're, they are going to modernize it because the guy who brings together the fighters is an MMA fighter. So one of the things I started speculating on after my review for the, of the trailer for the 2021 version of the film was that the MMA fighter is supposed to be um, the this film's version of Johnny Cage. Or maybe he's supposed to be Johnny Cage's son or something like that. So we'll see how they play factor that into the film. Um, but that's really all there is for this review. Um, so before I sign off, I do want to say, I think in my review of the Tr Mortal Kombat 2121 film trailer, I said 20, that the film's releasing in 2020 instead of 2021. So a um, little bit of after the fact correction there. But uh, yes, the film is a s slated to release in April of 2021. Um, so for me, it seems like the film can only go up from the 1995 version, but the 1995 version is not a bad film. In my opinion, it's good enough. It was fun to watch. Even now, it was good to get through and watch and generally, um, see all the characters use their special moves, all their various fight scenes. Um, the acting was good enough. The CGI was good enough for its time. So granted now, like I said, it does stand out a lot more as being not as good. So for me, if they can focus on things like that CGI being good and smooth, which I believe they can do, implementing a little bit more of the goriness of it. Um, it doesn't have to be, um, you know, gore for the sake of gore, but, um, you know, getting a bloody face in this day and age, I mean, we have um, seen enough of, of you know, um, spy thrillers and spy movies and things like that where people get bloodied up so even along the lines of that level would be good enough so we'll see how they go from there and they do have the ability to have good special effects for all the characters special moves so if the trailer is any indication it should be good so we'll see how they 
how the final version of the film ends up. So that's all there is for this particular review. So if you have any questions, comments, feedback of your own or anything like that, you can find me on Twitter at PatelN01. The website is PatelN01.com for past episodes, subscription links, supporting the show, and all of that good stuff. And of course, by supporting the show, you can get early access to upcoming content, providing your own feedback, get, get recommendations for what to review, and all of that good stuff. But thanks for tuning into this episode, and until next time.